Good morning from Woodland Baptist Church. We're glad that you're with us today. As we begin uh, in Christian Circle, which is called Holy Week, with Palm Sunday. And we pray you have a great, great day uh, in the Lord as we celebrate this annual moment where Jesus begins the last week of his life. At Woodland Baptist Church, we believe the most important thing is a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. There's nothing that underscores the importance of that relationship as well as the joy, as well as the responsibility in that relationship of reminding ourselves of Christ, his last week, his passion, all the things that he went through as far as teaching uh, the crowd as well as the disciples, but again, ultimately, uh, his giving over of his life uh, to the Father's timing and to the Father's will that would lead him into, but also through a cross and burial that would climax and could be complete uh, with resurrection, conquering death, conquering for us what we desperately needed for our life. In Matthew's Gospel, we see this moment being captured uh, that we call Palm Sunday. Let's read it just uh, with joy uh, and delight, but also receive its heart message for us today. When they had approached Jerusalem and had come to Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village up opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied there and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them, and immediately he will send them. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, gentle and mounted on a donkey, even on a colt, the foal, of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did just as Jesus had instructed them, brought the donkey and the colt and laid their coats on them, and he sat on the coats. Most of the crowd spread their coats in the road, and others were cutting branches from the trees and spreading them in the road. The crowds going ahead of him and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. What a moment as Jesus rides in. And yet let's remind ourselves that the disciples, again, taking some unique instructions, even maybe looking a little bit uh, suspect uh, for what they would be doing of taking someone else's animals, and yet following uh, the directions, the commands of our Lord. May we be the same. We too may get some unusual uh, command, some unusual instructions from our Lord that uh, we need to fulfill. We need to see the scripture being carried out through our lives just as much as the disciples did then. May we be responsive as well in saying yes uh, to what our Lord directs us to do. So that will be the way too that we'll experience uh, the moment, the lowly moment of cross, but also the high exalted moment of Jesus' life being resurrected in our day, in our lives, and in our circumstances. So worship with us today. I'm glad you're here again. Thanks for joining us, but may we uh, just celebrate and worship in spirit and truth, allowing God to speak to us. Let's pray. Our Father, we congregate this morning thanking you so much for your love that sets the pace for our life. We thank you for reminding us of the depth of that love as we move into this time and this week of remembering your life, your last moments, your last days. So you wrote in, and that's how it began. You began with writing in because disciples uh, listened, and they followed your instructions and got what was needed for you to fulfill Scripture, for you to begin this incredible journey to the cross. So, Father, may we, too, allow you to journey through our lives through the cross and it begins with us taking steps that will fulfill scripture today that will allow our lives to be in step with you and your love to come through us. We thank you that there's no other salvation but in your name and so may we bear it well and bear witness of it well to the world around us. So we've gathered, we've gathered for worship, we gathered to honor you, to lift your name up uh, just as those who did 2,000 years ago, welcoming you into Jerusalem, celebrating that. And, oh, Father, we want to as well. Celebrate you being our King. 
celebrate you being our Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we love you, we worship you. Bless 
and buried in the broken pieces but every minute every moment where I've been and where I'm going even when I didn't know I couldn't see it there was Jesus in the mountain in the valleys there was Jesus in the shadows or the alleys Every minute, every moment, where I've been or where I'm going, even when I didn't know it, I couldn't see it. There was Jesus. There was Jesus. There was Jesus. There was Jesus. There Yo 
so faithful that when we show up, God, you do uh, in such a way, Father, just to be in your presence that we can feel your spirit in this place this morning, God. And God, I know I'm, I'm guilty. Lord, I'll sing the song that I just want more of you or I just want more of your presence and I just want to be filled with your spirit, God, but we know, know that a lot of times it's just not true. God, I want what I want. I want what I feel like. I want what will make me happy for a moment, God, or make me feel better or whatever, God. And, and I know it's a lie. I know that the devil sits there and whispers in our ears, whispers in mine, that this is what you need. This is, this is the next thing. This is going to make it better. And it's a lie. God, it's a distraction from you. It's something that's trying to speak over your voice. Something trying to be louder in my life than your Holy Spirit and your word and the things that I truly need in my life, God. So, God, as I fail time and time and time again, and I try to wrap my mind around grace that I can't be earned, that you just pour out on me because I fail time and time and time again. I ask for things that I shouldn't have. God, I seek things that are bad for me as you sit there and Time and time again, try to get me on the right track, and I'm just not listening, God. I'm not listening to that voice. Dear God, I'm grateful this morning for your grace that covers all of that. But God, I don't want to live like that. I don't want to keep living like that. So, Father, I just pray every day, God, bit by bit, as we come closer to your glory and to actually physically be in your presence, that our faith becomes sight until that day, God, that we just get better that we don't get mired down in our failings, God, that we be lifted up by you, be lifted up by the knowledge that our creator, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, loves us and forgives us of everything, that our sins are not just forgiven, but they are forgotten, and that we are more than conquerors through your son, Jesus Christ. Let us live triumphantly and thankfully and humbly. We ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. As we've been going through our Bible reading plan, we were already reading uh, regarding the last night and last moments of Jesus' life. But we back up this morning again because of the focus of Palm Sunday and the uh, last seven, eight days of Jesus' life that's beginning to unfold. And so let's go back in the Gospel of John to chapter 12. This is where our text is today. It will sound familiar uh, with our scripture that we've had read already from the book of Matthew, Matthew 21. And so, but uh, this is uh, the Spirit leading John uh, in recounting this moment when Jesus comes into, into this time. And so we'll be reading chapter 12, verses 12 through 16. John chapter 12, verses 12 through 16. On the next day, the Lord's crowd who had come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, they took the branches of the palm trees and went out to meet him and began to shout, 
Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. Jesus, finding a young donkey, sat on it, as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. These things his disciples did not understand at the first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written of him and that they had done these things to him. Pray with me. Our Father, we thank you once again for the rich and precious word of you, the word of God. We thank you these words uh, speak to our hearts, still can be very fresh as your spirit quickens them and gives us enlightenment, illumination, and understanding, though a repeated moment, a repeated story, and still, wow, you can surface words, you can surface in our minds connections that may not have ever been made before. And so, Father, we thank you for your work today to accomplish that even our very lives as you seek from us a fresh expression, a fresh relationship with you that is on the alert, that is uh, moving in the adventure of following you, fulfilling again your purpose for your glory. How exciting is that? How significant for our lives and yet also for the lives around us. So as we have read your word, we want to receive it, but now help us to by the Spirit of God and Spirit of Truth to receive again the help that we need to adjust and to live what you're saying to us this morning. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. For this first moment that Jesus is with the disciples again, this is uh, the week called the Feast of Tabernacles. Uh, that is what has begun on this day that we now call Palm Sunday. Uh, the Jews back then, 2,000 years ago, they're moving toward the Passover, which is included in the full week of the Feast of Tabernacles. In Christian circles today, this week is called Holy Week, where we move through remembering uh, the passages of Scripture and, and the different ways that we see packaging, packaging the best that we can understand each day, how it unfolds, what Jesus was doing each of these days as he moves toward Good Friday and the cross and the things that, that are taking place. And so Palm Sunday inaugurates, Palm Sunday kick starts this week and so uh, what a moment it is for us to catch for us to connect with and let it apply to us and so let's just first capture the big picture uh, of this moment this triumphal entry and then kind of narrow down and look at one particular element that's taking place in this story and allow our hearts to apply that to experience Palm Sunday afresh and anew for us today. So first of all, the, palm, the, excuse me, the triumphal entry and its meaning. As Jesus uh, is moving in, the, this picture is uh, connecting to whenever a king, uh, a king would come back from, from battle. And so this is the imagery that uh, is taking place as scripture is being fulfilled and the disciples go uh, and get the donkey and the colt and all these things are happening. Uh, this is a basic imagery of a victorious king returning back from battle. And so, uh, yes, he would be on his horse and he would have... Uh, all his military men coming back with him, but again, the crowd that would be receiving the king and, and receiving the army uh, back to them. This is what's, again, the picture there of them welcoming, of them celebrating, of them rejoicing uh, of the victory and what is going on. So Jesus uh, is reflecting that in this moment. And so we see it takes place on the Sunday. Uh, on this first Sunday as they move toward the Passover, and the, which is, would be on a Saturday. And so uh, that's what's leading up to, and the Feast of Tabernacles went from Sunday to Sunday. The Feast of Tabernacles was eight days, and so the Passover is, is seated in toward the end. And so this is where the people would begin to assemble. Uh, they're moving in from all other areas uh, as well as Jesus is moving in. And so this would be the first day of this week-long celebration that they would be sharing uh, together. And so it would not be uh, uncommon 
uh, as Jesus would be coming in and all the other peoples coming in from various places uh, into Jerusalem, uh, that you would see these people and their families in kind of a caravan type fashion, uh, maybe even like more of a village kind, kind of grouping together. But they would have represented with them, carrying uh, them, their lambs. And they would be packaging them uh, to bring for the sacrifice that they would be offering. And uh, many of them would bring them. Uh, if they didn't, uh, they would be ready to purchase one uh, when they showed up uh, there in, in Jerusalem. And it was uh, not uncommon. And what we've understood from other uh, Jewish writings is that the, the lamb... Again, going back to Passover, going back to the lamb and uh, its blood being upon the doorpost, uh, it would be part of the meal uh, that would be shared before uh, Israel would be set free from Pharaoh, be set free, free from uh, Egypt, is that that lamb uh, would be with that family and live with that family in their very house for three days. And so they're bringing these lambs or will be purchasing soon uh, their lambs and so uh, they would be having them with them uh, and so, again, all this would be reflecting, again, Christ, him being the Lamb of God, uh, and him being with us. And so, all of that, again, is a tremendous picture that we see taking place in this triumphal scene, this triumphal entry that is taking place. Another element that we see is, again, Jesus coming in on this donkey. Uh, again, the king, the military king, would be coming in on his stallion would be coming in on his horse. But here is Jesus coming in on this beast of burden, as we read in the Old Testament passage. And a donkey, again, it's symbolic too. It is symbolic of this idea of peace. Often, uh, this was how the priest would travel, would be upon a donkey. So whenever he came into a town, uh, he would enter a village. He would be communicating he's here for a peaceful purpose. Uh, he's here to extend rest and prosperity uh, to them, to give them blessing, uh, to give them help. And so merchants often would, would do the same. The, the business type of people, they too would ride in on a donkey. Again, that would be communicating. That they're here to be helpful to this community uh, and to this town or whatever. And so they come communicating just by what they're riding on, uh, who they are, and the message they're trying to present and, and, and their purpose in coming. And so here is Jesus on his donkey, not a horse, and he is not about war like the military king. He is about peace. That is what shapes his kingdom. That is what defines his person. And the crown, so to speak, that he wears is one of peace. And so this donkey communicates this, again, fulfilling the scripture all the way back in Zechariah 9.9. 9. Again, this would be where the disciples, you know, pull it back, uh, not catching it all of what they're doing right then in that moment. Uh, but later on, Old Testament scripture bringing it back into their understanding, helping them to define all that Jesus was doing. So often he said, this is being done to fulfill Scripture. And so they made these connections over and over, and we see this being another one as Jesus comes on, uh, in upon this particular animal, communicating and representing this idea and virtue of peace. And then... We also see the crowd. They're there and they're doing lots of things. But one thing they're, they're doing, the scripture tells us, is that they are shouting. Uh, they don't care who is around and who is listening. We see from other uh, gospels that the Pharisees, religious leaders, were around. And they were not liking the crowd and their noise and what they were chanting. Hosanna! And that Hosanna means the idea to save now. That only that this Jesus who they want to be their king. He is also being received as the one who's going to save us. He's going to get us out of struggle. He's going to deliver us and get us to a better place than where we are existing right now. And so Hosanna say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, that God is the one who has brought him. God is the one who has sent him. And so blessed, we are indeed happy. We are indeed very fortunate and we're going to declare to have this one in our allegiance and our loyalty is affixed to him. And so he's the one that we see as the king. 
He is the one that we see as the Savior. He is the one coming into this moment that we lean on and that we want to trust to help us in the times that we're in. Yes, Jesus is reflecting so much in this triumphal entry, things that would have been familiar, symbolic messages that, that, that are coming in. Sometimes whenever we're uh, fixing a meal, sometimes we, we have a Vitamix and we'll put together and, and make a smoothie. And so we'll put different ingredients in there and uh, whatever we have or whatever we would like to have in our particular fruit smoothie. And so we put all that together and uh, layer it in there. And so at first you can say, oh, this is going to have some bananas in it and this is going to have certain kinds of berries or maybe some peaches are in it. You can kind of see uh, what is going to be created. But once you push that button, once you push that and that turns that motor on and that, that thing starts whizzing and humming and mixing together, you see a blend and a whole different color that, that was never represented in the layers, but when it's all mixed together, this is now how it looks. And now it's kind of more difficult to uh, see and differentiate. Oh, is that a peach? I'm not sure about that. Is that a bear? I don't know. It's just all together now. It's all worked itself together as one. And that's what we're seeing here in this picture, that Jesus is blending. Jesus is bringing together all these various components from what the crowd is shouting, from riding on a donkey, from all the things that are coming forth in this moment of reflecting a military kind of moment and victory. Jesus is saying he is receiving all of those messages that he is embodying this moment that in him there's victory in him there is indeed triumph that we need to receive and have in our life and so allow even our day in the blending of our life through its circumstances along with scripture and add in some prayer Add in some other people. And God is just blending and bringing and creating all of that together to announce who He is. That we, He too is riding in, as it were, into our lives and into our moments, speaking and helping and guiding. And we want to also see Him as the one that we want to see as blessed, that has come from God. And we want to save, say Hosanna and shout it and, and that we need Him to... Be the one who delivers us and saves us in whatever we're going through and the needs that are in our lives. That God is the one through Christ to be our answer in our deliverance and our help. Yes, this triumphal entry and its meaning. Still fresh, still appropriate, still where we need to focus our life when it comes to Christ on this very Palm Sunday. But also we see as we narrow down one element I didn't mention. That's also being woven in here, and it is the palm branches. We call this Palm Sunday. So the way to kind of pull that one out, let's focus on it just for a few moments, the palm branches and their meeting. We saw the bigger picture, the triumphal entry, but now this particular moment we see coats uh, being shared, as we read in the book of Matthew earlier. But also with those coats or cloaks, we see these outer garments of people being also this idea of palm branches. Now we know enough about uh, Israel and the geography of then as well as now that uh, palms were very much on roadsides, uh, kind of marking the way, but also very dominant in the Mount of Olives. And so the gathering, the assembling together of palm branches could have been easily done. First of all, it's just a broad statement. The palm branches, again, to represent, they symbolize the idea for the Jewish people that it's uh, communicating victory. That these are, in particular, go with this triumphal entry so well. Uh, I guess they didn't have banners like we have announcing and stuff, and so they found that would wave and they sound, found something that they could kind of extend their arms and make it a little bit bigger and a little bit better and a little bit more demonstrative. And so these palm branches help communicate that. So they would cut them off and uh, they would be what they would also assemble in waving and uh, helping to lay the path. Uh, they would be what would welcome and be the red carpet, so to speak, that would uh, bring forth a military conqueror or here in Jesus' case, him 
riding in. And so here's the palm branches representing for the Jews, and they're using it in this moment, victory. Our, they're simple. We even understand that it was, again, palm branches being so dominant and such a connection for them. It was on their coins. Archaeology has helped us to find that it was expressed there as well. And so again, these, uh, this idea of palm branches was huge and we see it being central in this picture as Jesus comes into Jerusalem on this particular Sunday. And so they gather. The people are gathering and they welcoming Jesus with these palm branches. Again, the waving, the, dip, uh, the, the, the shouting, uh, all these things that are helping to extend a very uh, expressive moment for the people uh, to enjoy, uh, to be able to have their voice uh, and their say. Uh, we could probably throw in the idea that because... They're coming in from all these different directions. There's definitely a connection of knowing Jesus from Galilee here, uh, seeing his miracles, seeing all the things that, that he has done. And yet probably in addition to that, there might be having those that we don't, they don't know exactly who he is. But everybody else is celebrating. Everybody else is laying down a coat. Everybody else has got a palm branch and laying it down or waving it. And so there might have been others that were joining in and they're celebrating, maybe not with full awareness of who he was, maybe heard his name and those types of things. So you can just, again, this amassing of people, this gathering together at this huge Jewish festival that palm branches representing the symbol of victory are being part of the welcome scene, the celebratory moment that is being expressed here for the people. Now, with all that being said, we need to understand with the people, those who may know him, those who may not really have Jesus on their radar, what is the king they want? What is the savior and the deliverance that they really feel they need that they want Jesus to accomplish? And that's where we kind of get off track or they get off track, that they never were able to pull together, uh, that Jesus is not going to be uh, a p political king. That is what they desire. That is what they want. And yet that is not the king they're going to receive. That is not the king that Jesus has come to be. Jesus, on the other hand, has come to be a spiritual. He has come to be a spiritual king to uh, deliver th them from their sin to save them from uh, their heart. Uh, that is what he is coming to really pull through and extend to the people. And again, so we, as we've seen throughout the Gospel of John, Jesus speaks on one level. The understanding is on a lower level. Jesus speaks spiritual and eternal and their understanding earthly uh, and how they're wanting to understand. And so all that, again, is what we see here that culminates. Uh, that's why the week would end like it would. These same people shouting welcome. These same people shouting Hosanna. These same people waving palm branches and laying down their cloaks would be also one day very soon saying crucify him. They would be shouting a completely different message. And so with all of that coming together, we see the palm branches again central to this moment and for what God is wanting to accomplish in, in their lives. And yet, it is this wrong message that they have failed to understand, that they have failed to pull into their life of who they wanted Jesus to be. They wanted someone to give them a better hope, to get Rome off their back, all these things, and yet Jesus said, no, that's really not why I'm here. That is really not your problem. Yes, they may be a problem, but your problem is sin. Your problem is being off target in that direction. So here we are, 2,000 years later. And I would just offer to us today, let's correct the error. Let's correct the moment that they missed 2,000 years ago. Let's put in place strongly and profoundly for each of us that Jesus has come to bring us spiritual salvation.
that what he is concerned about is not just our earthly existence, but how we exist now and how it will impact our eternity as well as others. That is the reason that we want to welcome him into our lives today. That is the one the reason that we want him to be proclaimed and that we're shouting is because we know now that what he has done has not been really changing our external circumstances, but he's been changing our hearts the entire way. He's been working on the internal. And so the external is there, but we have him and he is walking with us and we seek to to faithfully say we want to walk with him and with his spirit's help and the truth of his word guiding us and directing us that we get to where he wants us to be and that we can go through our mess and that we can go through our difficulty and yet we can know that because of him being our true king, him being our spiritual deliverer and our salvation, we shout today, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. How do you celebrate him today on this Palm Sunday? How do you want to wave your palm branch? How do you want to express your gratitude and your goodness and your deep, profound joy because of who he is and how he has revealed to you and perhaps to your family? How he has worked even in this past week maybe through circumstances. A medical diagnosis over here. A financial struggle over there. And yet Hosanna came. Jesus rode in on his donkey as it were. Bringing in peace. And though it was all chaos around you. Though it looked so dark. Jesus' peace brought light and hope and restoration restoration and reconciliation to your life. Oh, let him ride in today. Let him ride in and bring into your life peace. Let him ride through you. Get on the donkey with him, as it were, and ride with him into other lives, into your workplace tomorrow, back into your family. Take a moment and share and make sure that we're not missing anything that he has done and what he is wanting to accomplish in our lives, that we're giving him the credit, him all the glory for working and accomplishing. That Palm Sunday is still happening, but we're not making the error. We're not wanting him to be someone different than what he has chosen to be to match our truest need and to, be, to meet our real concern and that is a relationship with God for all eternity. The era, we wipe it off and now we put back in place with genuineness and with truth, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Name of the Lord. And yes, our King. And he rules and he reigns. Back in November, we talked about extend the hands. Palms up. Palms. That's what I want you to do today. Palms up. Extend the hands. Give thanks. Let Jesus and his peace ride in. Allow him to save you if you've never allowed his salvation to touch your heart. Let him come peacefully into your life and into your situation. Don't hold him back. Don't exclude him. Don't let him be the, the last option. Choose him first as the best option. Extend the hands. Palms up. Rejoice. He's ready to come. Let him be your symbol of victory. You're more than a conqueror through him who loved you. Is that you've been your experience? Is that what you've been knowing? If not, we need to ask ourselves, why not? Will you pray with me? Our Father, we do in great mercy and with much grace need you to step into our world. We need you to ride into our home, into our Jerusalem as it were, into our moment on that donkey communicating that you're about peace. And though our lives may be in the midst of much unknown and confusion and chaos. So Father, we, like the crowd, we wave our palm branches of victory, 
We lay down our cloaks. We shout Hosanna. Yes, we extend the hands, palms up, to receive as well as to lift up to you our deep gratitude and our praise to you. We thank you for extending yourself to us. May we allow your life to come in the way that we greatest, that we really need, so that we can then be in partnership with you to extend the true message and the true person to those who need it around us. Thank you, Father, for your sharing your life and your heart with us. Fill us, Father, with your spirit to communicate and live out well the experience of Palm Sunday. We thank you that we've learned from the past here and we don't have to make the same mistake. Help us to receive you for who you truly are so that we can truly have your salvation and your life. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Jesus.